Hello and thank you for joining me for another episode of Run Level Zero. Today we're looking at Ubuntu 14.04 Trusty Tar. Um, if you're new to Linux, this is probably the most popular uh, Linux distribution around. Uh, Ubuntu has been sitting at the top of the food chain for quite a while now. Uh, Ubuntu is one of the most forked uh, distributions out there uh, with with many of the most popular Linux distros being based on Ubuntu uh, distributions such as Zorn, uh, Linux Mint, and the, and the various uh, Buntu derivatives, Kubuntu, Zubuntu, Lubuntu, and all those others. Uh, this is one of the flagship uh, Linux distributions. Just a word of caution though, if you are a new Linux user, if this is if you're considering Ubuntu for your first desktop, uh, it is a friendly environment, but there is a learning curve. As you can obviously tell, this is going to be distinctly foreign from anything that a Windows or Mac user has been used to. But I would not discourage you from trying it. So let's get into it. What is new in Ubuntu uh, 14.04? Well, honestly, and you know, a little bit of a disappointment is not much. Um, th there have been a few improvements which we're going to take a look at here, but uh, it's still the same standard Unity desktop. One of the things you may notice right off the bat, uh, something is missing from the dash, and that is Ubuntu 1. There's no longer an Ubuntu 1 uh, launcher here, and that's because uh, Canonical is no longer going to be supporting Ubuntu 1. The, they, it was really one of the first integrated uh, on cloud storage solutions with a desktop. But unfortunately, uh, I guess it, it wasn't receiving the support that they had hoped for, so that is no longer going to be included. Looking at the Ubuntu desktop, you do have one primary desktop with a panel across the top. This is more of an omni panel. Users really cannot do much in the way of theming this, but uh, system notifications and the like will be displayed up here. And along the left hand side, you have what is known as the dash which is this Ubuntu symbol here, as well as your quick launch icons. Uh, launching files, which is the file manager for uh, Ubuntu, which is basically Nautilus. Uh, this one has, it, it's, it's a very robust, very feature rich uh, file manager. It's straightforward, it's simple, it does what it says it's going to do. Um, Nautilus back, I believe it was with uh, beginning in, in late uh, 2013, started introducing some changes that weren't really popular with the users. Those have been pretty much restored back to the way they were during the last uh, long-term support release of 12.04. So Ubuntu users should be quite happy with the way that their file manager is working now. The default web browser is Firefox and you have the LibreOffice uh, suite installed, which is a fully Microsoft compatible uh, feature rich office suite. Uh, next in line we have the Ubuntu Software Center, which is in my opinion one of the most new user friendly uh, software centers out there. Although it's not really the fastest software center, as you can tell it takes a couple minutes. It has been improving over the last couple of years. And one of the reasons I like it is because you do have good categorization. So say you're looking for a web browser, uh, you can simply search internet and then go for the web browser subcategory. And you'll have all the available web browsers laid out here. So it is very much friendly for the new user. Uh, continuing on down the line, you have a shortcut to Amazon. Uh, one of the things that we're going to get into here in a moment are the online search results. Uh, back in late 2012, uh, Ubuntu started including search results in their dash for Amazon, and it has expanded to other providers since then. Now, this has been met with lots of controversy uh, from, from the Linux community over privacy concerns, and we're going to address some of those privacy concerns in a uh, follow-on video. I really don't have a problem with the online search results per se, but what I do have a problem with is the way in which uh, Ubuntu has implemented those search results. 
it is a opt out program rather than opt in and in my opinion not enough disclosure is made up front about it to fully inform the user especially the new user over what that entails so we'll, we'll, we'll touch on that again here in just a moment moving down the line though you have quick access to your system settings panel which has been forked now it's uh, unity has its own system settings panel and it's actually quite snappy quite responsive uh, while we're here one of the uh, new behaviors if you go into appearance click on behavior now you have the option in addition to auto hiding the launcher enabling workspaces you have this new section for show the menus for a window now you can Opt, you, you can opt you, you can opt whether or not you want your uh, menus integrated into the uh, menu bar if you haven't used in fact let's open up another uh, window right quick if you haven't used unity before you'll notice that there are no menus here and that can be frustrating for some users uh, the menus for the active window by default or up here on the menu bar so here is your file edit it's all up here well now you can choose where you want those to appear so if you want it to appear in the menu bar up top or in the windows title bar now when you click they're back down here so that's nice they put that choice in the user's hand I like mine up top okay so moving on the trash bin is down at the bottom as usual uh, something else that you can do now let's go back over to our system settings into appearance another thing that you can actually do is uh, change the the, the uh, size of the launcher uh, in fact that would be here the launcher icon size it, it's it goes up a bit higher now it defaults to 48 point but you can now choose to take it all the way up to 64 or all the way down to 16 so you have a wider range of control over uh, the size of those icons and that that will help support uh, your screen resolutions a little bit better so just thought that was worthwhile on the panel across the top of course we have as you've already seen your system button here where you can get some information about the computer launch Ubuntu help go back to the system settings panel you can lock the screen switch user log out suspend or shut down uh, the shutdown buttons dialog here has received an overhaul and it, it looks a lot better these nice rounded corners so it looks a lot better moving on we have our calendar and clock volume settings battery monitor if applicable uh, this is a, a feature that was introduced in 13.10 uh, which I really like this shows you your current uh, character map which mine is currently set in English but you can easily by clicking that and going to character map you can change uh, your character mapping so that is quite easy uh, keyboard layout chart I mean this I can see being very helpful if you are multilingual and perhaps uh, send emails or, or do business in, in a variety of languages where you're at uh, that can make switching back and forth uh, quite a bit easier and then following on you have your network settings so it, it's all pretty standard as far as the the unity desktop layout uh, not not really much has changed there uh, moving on to the dash clear out that search result in fact let's go back to the system monitor while we're here take a look at resources right now uh, it's running at 650 well right at 652 meg of RAM so it it is a fairly resource heavy uh, Linux desktop environment but again this is I have it running in a virtual machine with two gigabytes of RAM and two dedicated processors and while there is just a bit of lag it's still moving along fairly nicely uh, but you definitely want to take this uh, memory requirement into consideration uh, you know in referencing your hardware on your system all right 
So, if you go into filter, if you go into the dash, click on filter results, and scroll down, you can see the sources here. And this is what we were talking about before with your uh, online search results. So basically, whenever you type anything into the dash here, that search string is sent by the Unity desktop to the canonical servers, who then act as a proxy and send those search that search string on to uh, these various online sources. And you can tell what sources are being searched by the ones that are highlighted. So, you know, if you want eBay, Amazon, you know, you can do, let's do, uh, let's see, Google Drive is highlighted. Let's see what else we have here. Wikipedia, the Weather Channel. Okay. So it, when we type anything into the dash here, if I can spell it right, let's just type in weather. This string weather is sent to, sent to Ubuntu, who then queries these sources on our behalf and then returns these results to, to Ubuntu, who then passes them on to us. So we're assured by uh, Ubuntu that they're standing uh, between us and these online sources and just returning uh, these online results. So if you don't want those uh, online search results, you, you can choose just by highlighting or unhighlighting, you know, say Amazon, who you're receiving results from. Okay, you can see I highlighted there and my results expanded. Now if you want to turn those settings off globally, you can either type privacy here and go to security and privacy or you can reach the same menu by going into your system settings panel and security and privacy. You're then going to go to the search tab and where it says include online search results turn it off and that will turn off all online search results globally. Okay, I'm going to turn this back on. I have another video to do after this regarding that. Okay, so across the bottom, uh, you can see we have the home screen. These are our lenses, or our scopes here. Uh, you can search applications, search files and folders, uh, search your videos, your music, photos, or social network messages. This is if you choose to uh, sign up for your sign up your online accounts. You go into system settings and uh, go into online accounts. You can actually hook up, you know, your Facebook, your Google accounts, and that sort of thing, and allow the Unity Desktop access. And so it'll include results from, say, your your Google Drive or your social media. So let's go over to. Uh, search applications, filter results. You can actually sort these applications by uh, application groups. So if you want to look at, say, your Office applications, just click Office. And here are your installed Office results. This, I can see the Unity Dash would, may be a bit confusing for a new Linux user. I would probably recommend this more for an intermediate user, but hey, if you're adventurous and you want to give it a try, by all means do it. Um, well, that's really it for Ubuntu 14.04 and just a quick tour of the Unity desktop. Again, not a whole lot has changed between 13.10 and 14.04. Uh, a few refinements. Regarding the online search results, you know, I really have mixed feelings about them. I'm very disappointed with the way that uh, that Ubuntu has chosen to implement them. I wish that there would be more full disclosure, full disclosure, and that it would be uh, opt in rather than opt out. But you know, on the face, the concept of the online search results, I really don't mind, especially with Canonical being an intermediary between the user and 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 the online source. So I really have mixed feelings about it, but I am disappointed with the way that it was implemented. But I am. <laughs> you know, the flip side of that same coin, I am encouraged to hear that they are going to be rectifying that uh, in the future. So, Ubuntu, Unity Desktop, 
yeah, you, you can give it a try. Just go in being informed that anytime you type anything into the dash, it is being sent away from your computer uh, to uh, Ubuntu. So if that concerns you, be sure to turn off the, uh, the online search results in security and privacy. So that's it. Give it a try. Let me know what you think. Uh, thank you for joining me today, and I hope to be with you soon for another video.